from Thruway Lanes in Cheektowaga, New York, USA Network presents the Professional Bowlers Tour. And tonight, it's the $100,000 Buffalo Open. And these are our five finalists. In fifth place, with 27 PBA titles, second best in PBA history, three-time Bowler of the Year, Mark Roth. The fourth place finisher has won twice on the PBA Tour, both times on USA, Steve Fair. Qualifying third is the hottest bowler on the tour, looking to become only the fourth bowler in history to win three straight titles, Marshall Holman. In second place is one of the leading candidates for Bowler of the Year with three titles in 1983, Tom Milton. And the man they'll be shooting at, this week's leader, bowling one game for $13,000 and his first individual title, Sam Zurich. The Buffalo Open on USA is brought to you in part by Miller High Life, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time. By Mobile Detergent Gasoline for your everyday driving needs. By Levi's Jeans, Cords, and Shirts for quality and style you can count on. And by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA One, and USA One is taking charge. After spending some straight hot weeks on the southern circuit of the PBA Summer Tour, the tour has come north. But one thing that remains hot is Marshall Holman. I'm Al Troutwig along with Mike Durbin, welcoming you to the $100,000 Buffalo Open. Marshall's won two weeks in a row, Mike, and he's trying to become only the fourth bowler to win for the third straight time. But let's talk about the bowlers first who are trying to beat him. First of all, Sam Zurich. Sam Zurich is the leading qualifier in this tournament, Alan. He's we have an award that we give on the PBA Tour. It's called the Nice Guy Award, Good Guy Award. It's the Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award. And Sam Zurich won it last year. He's a soft-spoken, quiet guy. He gets along well with everyone out here. He has two titles, one a regional title and one a national title. They were both doubles titles. So he's trying to win for the first time by himself as a singles. He's a bowler that's had a lot of potential. We've always expected him to win. Maybe today will be his time. One bowler who has figured prominently on the PBA Tour in 1983 is Tom Milton. He's already has three titles to his right. credit this year. He's been hot. He bowls very interestingly. Well, Tom throws that big hook. He's very tall. He's 6'3", and he throws a tremendous hook in the eighth frame of the, the position round game last night. He threw a ball out so wide that I never thought it had a chance to get back, and it just roared back and hit solid. He generates a lot of area as he's throwing the ball. I personally think he's the man that's going to win today. He's won three times. If he wins today, it'll be his fourth title. He'll have twice as many victories as anyone else would really put him right in the picture for Bowler of the Year. Well, if you were looking at our show last week, you saw Marshall Holman stand right next to Mike and I and accept his winner's check and announce on the air that he said, well, I better bowl Buffalo. I'm bowling very, very well. And indeed, he is here. He is in the TV finals. Let's talk about him. He's bowling very well. Well, Marshall Holman throws a tremendous ball, but sometimes the most exciting part of Marshall Holman's game is after he's thrown the ball, watching him in his gyrations as he runs the strike out or as he grinches his teeth or slaps his hands or stares at his opponent, which he did last week. We saw a lot of that. Trying to win three in a row, Allen, is a tough task. It, the competition out here is fierce. As you say, there's only been three other bowlers in PBA history that have been able to do it. He has to win three games today on television to be able to do it. I wish him well, but it's a tough task. We'll see if he can do it. Those three bowlers are Dick Weber, Johnny Petraglia, uh, Johnny Petraglia, and Mark Roth. Last week, Marshall Holman wrapped up his victory with a 290, the highest game that we've seen on USA Network and the highest TV game thus far this year. Earlier, I had a chance to talk with Marshall about what he faces tonight. Marshall, one game for the title two weeks ago, two games for the title one week ago. If you're going to win here in Buffalo, you need three games. How do you feel? I'm ready, Alan. Uh, you know, things have been really falling well for me on television in the last couple of weeks. I'm not sure if uh, there'll ever be another chance for me to win three in a row, so I've got to take it for all it's worth today. You're going to get up against some very stiff competition here, including Mark Roth, perhaps, who's, who's won three titles in a row, and you had a hand in that, so you know what it's like to be caught up in the emotion of winning three titles in a row. Well, yeah, I was fortunate to be uh, Mark's partner that year in doubles, and we won the doubles tournament, and then... Uh, I just sat back and watched Mark Roth throw probably three of the greatest shots I've ever seen in my life. Uh, to win his third title, he needed three strikes in the 10th frame against Bobby Fligman of California to win the tournament. He had not hit the right-hand lane the whole game. He went bang, 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 10 in the pit, great shots, just impressed everybody. It was really 
quite an event to see. Now, Marshall, after we see you make a shot uh, in our coverage of USA, we have to decide whether to see the shot again or to see you again in your reaction. Your reactions are unbelievably spectacular at times. Now, how do, what, is, what part does that play in your success? I think it plays a big part in my success. I know when I was, when I was having trouble on, uh, on television finals, my father would say, come on, Marshall, get, you know, get pumped up and show emotion and uh, you know, be excited. And uh, it plays a very big part. I was very, very emotional in the tournament in Austin. And uh, the tournament in Venice, well, I was twice as emotional. Uh, it's hard for me to think that I could be any more emotionally involved in the game and with my, with my annex in this tournament than I was last week. But uh, I'm fired up. Like I said, you don't have many chances to win three in a row. I've got to take it for all it's worth. And Marshall this week also bowled a 300 game to continue. Now he has two titles. Tom Milton has three. And there's a scramble now to give Earl Anthony some competition for Bowler of the Year between those two. Well, right. They're both chasing Earl Anthony right now. If Marshall wins today, he would have three, which would be one more than Earl. If Milton wins, he'll have four, which would be two more than Earl. It would really, uh, if either one of those two players win today, it's going to really throw the Bowler of the Year race up in the air. Well, the five bowlers we'll see tonight have more than 40 PBA titles to their credit. A great field. Mark Roth, the 27 time PBA title holder will go up against Steve Fair the sophomore on the PBA tour when we return with the PBA on USA after this. Working around here a guy gets very wet on the outside and very dry on the inside. smooth taste of Miller High Life. taking a trip for business or pleasure, it's nice to know the best places to stay and eat along the way. The Mobile Travel Guide comes in seven regional editions. It quality rates hotels, motels, and restaurants from one to five stars. You get easy to follow maps and coupons worth up to 50% off on attractions and places to stay. The Mobile Travel Guide. It'll make your trip five star all the way. Levi's. Beige corduroy, Levi. Green corduroy, Levi. Blue corduroy, Levi. Tan corduroy, Levi. White, gray, brown, cream. Seventeenth time in Buffalo, the PBA Tour will decide a champion. And in game one, hoping to move forward is Steve Fair, 28 years old, a two-time PBA title winner on the right side of your screen. And to the left, the very familiar face of 32-year-old, 27 PBA title veteran, Mark Roth from Wall Township, New Jersey. It was in Limerick, Pennsylvania last year that Mark Roth last won, and that was on USA at the PBA Regional Classic. In fact, both these bowlers won on the fall tour last year with Steve Fair winning twice closing out by winning the Brunswick Memorial World Open in Chicago. 214.6 fares average this week. Both bowlers will be playing close to the third arrow on lanes 47 and 8 here. And Steve Fair starts out with a solid strike. Let's focus in on Steve Fair for a moment. Very unusual approach here. You see the arm bend as he gets into the backswing, completely bent, but it straightens out at the bottom. See how straight it is at the bottom? Stiff-legged, straight to the ball. Great result. Mark Roth, weak 10. Mark Roth also playing in around the third arrow, still using those choppy little steps, that high backswing, and pulls that ball through hard. Ball just didn't quite finish on lane 48. 
Watch how Mark shoots his spare. He goes cross lane, flattens the ball out, and throws it 100 miles an hour, somewhat like Joe Berardi does. He once made the 7-10 on television by throwing it so hard at that 10 pin, he bounced it around and made it the 7 pin just like it was supposed to happen. He has a tremendous amount of power. And while he doesn't look as graceful as some of the other bowlers, he's just had the ability to win 27 times. Made it, work, made it work for him once or twice, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. Only Earl Anthony has one more. And only Earl Anthony has one more in career money. Mark is 26th on the earnings list this year. Look at that, the elbows come in together. It's a way out on the lane. There's the old. Is it going to fall? Mark Roth used to live on that light hit, where he just hit him thin and watch him spin, as Billy Rayler used to say. But it didn't know that they were going to spin it up on this. And see the, these choppy little steps. Now, what's the ball at the top of the swing? See that wrist snap through. Mark runs it out over here to the right. Back to Steve Fair, looking for his first title of 1983. Won twice last year. Steve can jump right out to a 10-pin lead if he can double. A little high and trips the four pin out of there. And Steve Fair will be working on a double. That was hard to do this week, Alan. A lot of four pins left this week, a lot of four nines. You see the ball go just left of the third arrow, maybe right over it. Watch your two pin, third from the left. Goes off the wall and just nudges that four pin right out of there. Steve definitely has the, the body of an athlete. He spends a lot of time exercising and conditioning. And so far in 1983, he's won $37,000, just a little bit more than Mark Roth. Very meticulous player. Takes his time, sets himself perfectly. Looks like he should be an accountant for a CPA firm or something. I'll let him do my taxes. Takes a lot of time, though. He says he wants to concentrate as fully as he can on every shot. The light, solid 10. Wow, good shot. He wanted that one badly. And so the standing 10 pins are one apiece. The only difference was Marks was weak and his was solid. See that concentration, determination on his face? Good follow through. He's watch he knows it's a good shot at this point. He's just saying carry now. Watch this. Ooh, the teeth come together. I guess Marshall Holman's not the only one that can grit <laughs> the teeth. Huh? 60 feet away. Uses the 10 an, pin. Another ball to shoot the 10 pin. One that goes straighter, converts it easily. And now back to Mark Roth. Bowled eight straight weeks on the winter tour, needed some time off. His best finish of the year was third at the Firestone Tournament of Champions. He bowled very well that week. Comes in light and gets that light hit. That's the old Mark Roth right there with that light hit. Well, his body English prevented us from seeing that as clearly as we might have, but they all went down. That's just a typical wall shot hit where he gets that tremendous lift and turn that he was famous for in the 70s. Buries those fingers, jams them in there. Takes very little time. Both hands up there, choppy little steps. Way out on the lane. Brings it in there, perfect. Great shot there. And Mark Roth has slid into the lead by 11 pins. Steve Fair now bowling in the fourth frame. Steve in his sophomore year on the tour, his second. Steve's had every ball in the pocket. It appears the right lane is hooking just a little earlier, a little more than the left lane. The light, and he gets a wall shot. And so the boys weren't striking in practice. Believe me, I was watching them in practice, and so when they ended up, they weren't getting many, but they saved them all for the right time now. As he goes back to that bottle that we saw last year. And we see here, Roth with 20 in the first and a triple working. Actually, he's got 50 in the second. And Fair with 69 in the third and a strike up. The difference is 11 pins at this point. What's in that little bottle? It's some kind of uh, stick him, something to uh, help him grip the ball just a little bit better, some kind of rosin. He's taking a re rack on lane 47. Again, he's allowed three per game, and he's taking the, the first of his three. He left that solid 10, you remember, back in the third frame on this lane. It might have been 
the rack many times when we bowlers leave those solid tens we blame those racks. <laughs> there he is with that unusual grip with that index finger in the ball as a conventional grip that index finger is only bowler in the tour to try it or do that. And he's high and full penalty. The big four trouble. six ten. Right, big see. shot right there. Just a little short with the shot. He did not get the ball out to his target. It's a little left. It hooks too early right now, and it's high. Does not get any break of breaking up the split. As a virtual impossible, 4 6 10. And gets eight out. He went for it all the way in a one game match. Cost him two pins and count. Right, that's Winds on up. the left lane. Let's see if he continues to have trouble there. Winds up putting Mark Roth up by 25 pins at this point in the match. And that's the midway point of game one at the Buffalo Open on USA. And we'll continue with Steve Fair and Mark Roth after these messages coast to coast. Top Chevy trucks are taking charge with Chevy S10 Blazer four-wheel drive. So advanced it was named 4x4 of the year. S10 Blazer 4x4 leads the imports with Instatrack. The only system that lets you shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. S10 Blazer leads Bronco 2 with two-wheel drive they don't offer, a four-cylinder engine they don't have, and mileage they can't touch. Chevy S10 Blazer. Top Chevy trucks are taking charge. In the beginning, man's feet walked free, but the road to civilization was paved, so man developed shoes. Soon after that, man developed athlete's foot. He got it. Now, at last, there's Mycotin. Mycotin cures athlete's foot. It's the only athlete's foot medicine you can buy with Myconazole, an ingredient available for the first time without a doctor's prescription. Mycotin in spray, powder, or cream. Mycotin, the end of the road for athlete's foot. A double play. Anyone who pitches for a living loves a beautifully turned twin killing. Hi, this is Tom Seaver for the Sporting News, and we have a twin killing for you. Two issues for the price of one to introduce you to the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. That's right, you'll get 26 issues of the Sporting News for just $9.99. Two for the price of one. And you can't buy the Sporting News for a lower price anywhere. It's the magazine that gives me the no-nonsense details of all Major League Sports and college action. To love sports is to love the sporting news, the Sports Bible. Why don't you subscribe today, and here's a friend to tell you how. That's right, Tom. You get the sporting news at the low rate of 38 cents an issue. 26 issues for $9.99. That's half the regular subscription price. Call toll-free 1-800-USA-1000. In Georgia, 1-800-222-7272. That's 1-800-USA-1000. In Georgia, 1-800-222-7272. Here's a look at someone who helps us out each and every week, except this week he was very successful. Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas, who usually does our stats, and he was on top and just fell short in that last round. He was on top with one round to go with eight games, and sometimes things slip away from you, and they slipped away from Mark. I know he felt bad not making the telecast, but... Uh, He's bowling better. It's two finals in a row for him. Maybe next week he'll get into that championship round. Wish he made it. I had a lot of interesting things I wanted to say about it. There's Mark's wife, Jackie. On three in a row, trying for four. And neither bowler gets a break. That's the exact thing he did not want to happen. At that point, if Mark strikes, he can put fair away. He leaves the 4-7-10, a potential open. And again, he's left of target. He's aiming at the third arrow, and you see the ball hit left of it. No hold, right through the nose, and again, doesn't break up the split. Hard and straight at it. Doesn't make it. And we've got a very close match at this point now. Mark Roth is ticked off. Steve Fair is relieved. It's now only a 10-pin lead for Roth. Just to show you the difference that that made, Alan, if Mark would have struck on that ball, he would have been up by 35 pins. He opened, and it's a 10-pin difference right now. We saw Mark's Ro Mark Roth's wife, Jackie. They have their little daughter, Stephanie, here as well. She's a cutie. Well, I haven't seen her yet. I'll have to... She is a cutie. 
Way out on the lane, right back in the pocket. Ooh, the nine pin went out of there slow. There were a lot of four nines this week. He gets a lot of action on his pins, doesn't he? He always did. He always did. That's what he was one of the first power players to come along. And really, now the tour is just inundated with power players, but uh, he was one of the first ones to come along. And he's up near a million dollars in career earnings. He'll get there. It's only a matter of time. Cross lane at the four pin. And makes it on the left. But he puts Steve Fair back in the match now. It is only a 10 pin lead. Steve Fair has got some pretty good numbers in his favor as well. In only a second year, he's up to $119,000 in career earnings. Not a bad average. Considering he hardly made any money on the winter tour last year. Little high, breaks down the split, leaves only the 4 7. He's pleased with that. He didn't break down those splits very often this week. Every time I hit that nose, I wound up getting a split this week or many times. Steve Fair's wife, Nancy. They have two children as well, Jeffrey and Stacy. Right now, my daughter is babysitting for both of them. Is that right? Right. Everybody's working. Got to earn some money somewhere. Makes the 4 7. And it is still a 10 pin lead for Mark Roth as we bowl now in the seventh frame. Right. You can see the open frame for Roth was in the fifth. The open frame for Fair was as well in the fifth. Harry Golden, tournament director, checking out the alignment on the left lane, which is lane 47. Evidently, Steve's uh, used his allotment of re-racks up already. He's given the okay on this one to Steve Fair. And they like this one better. Steve patting that ball. Gave this one more room. Pretty shot. Pretty shot. Played any rack. That, that would have been a strike with any rack there. He breaks the drought. He had gone two frames right. without a strike. You see how much closer to the foul line he sets the ball down, gets the ball rolling much sooner than Mark Roth does. Mark Roth gets the ball well over the foul line, and the ball rolls much later down the lane. And this one slides by and leaves the 2-5. See, there's the adjustment. He went high the last time. He probably moved to board, thinking that the lane was breaking down, gave it a little more room, and it didn't come back. So those kind of adjustments that really frustrate a pro bowler. Sometimes we, we adjust for shots that maybe we did not throw as well as we should have, and it's the wrong thing to do. He's probably going to throw hard and straight at this 2-5 and not try and hook it at all. And he makes it. That was our tip last week. <laughs> You taught him how to make that one? Well, I didn't teach him how, but uh, maybe he was watching. I don't know. Right now, he's eight pins ahead as we head to the eighth frame, working on a spare. He seems to have lost the momentum he had earlier in the match. And he wants a re-rack as well on that left lane. Evidently, the left lane is setting a bad rack quite frequently. He was the PBA Player of the Year three times, 77, 78, and 79. You know what I was surprised to read is that his championship round record is less than 500. He's 44 and 55. And you see Mark spreading that index finger out, cupping that wrist, and he snaps through with those fingers. And the ball never went into a roll. He just didn't get it back. Leaves the two pin. Many great players have less than 500 records on television. I don't know what Earl Anthony's record is right offhand, but I know he's lost a lot of games on television. Mark seems to have lost the pocket right now at this point in the match. Has an easy spare here with a two pin. But he's let Steve Fair have second life. Has the two pin. An open frame in the fifth and then three straight spares for Mark Roth. Still a seven pin lead. Right now, if Steve Fair can strike on lane 48, he'll take the lead as the closing frames are coming up. And patting that ball with his left hand as he gets himself ready to go. Very little push away. 
a little light, and it didn't make it back. The same thing that Mark Ross ball did. They're a little short of their target. It goes high. They give it a little room, and it's the dinner bucket, the two, four, five, eight. He thought he threw this ball halfway decent. It just never bit the lane. It keeps sliding here where it should turn over and come back, and the one pin does not hit the two. It goes right around, and unless that head pin hits the two pin, you can't strike. How many times have you heard a bowler say, I thought I threw that one perfect? Well, that happens. I mean, uh, very difficult spare right here now, too. And he chops the two right off the five, just snapped right at the back end. And this is a match of here you take it, no, I don't want it. He plays it from the left, right over about the middle arrow, pretty close to his strike line. And it just snaps right here and chops that two right straight off the five. It's, it's a tough spare right now. 143 in the eighth frame. He's down 19 pins. He must strike here in the ninth frame. If he strikes, he's still potential 203. Right now, if Mark Roth would strike spare out, he's going at 202 pace. High again. Breaks down the 3610, leaves only the 36, and Steve has lost the pocket also. The lanes are not easy out there right now. They both seem to be experimenting during the game. Well, it's just that they're not aiming it very much right now. They've really got to splice their target with the right speed and right lift, and uh, they're not doing it every time. It's just that simple. Reverse the three six, but boy, the door's wide open now for Mark Roth. But two, he's in trouble too. Two, but all he right now, all he needs to do is mark twice, and he locks him out. If he can mark in the ninth frame and tenth frame, he's going to win the first match. When you've got to hope for your opponent to open, you're in bad trouble. Way out of the lane, and it snaps through high, breaks up the split, leaves only the 610. Again, there's the adjustment. He went light last time on that lane. Neither one of them know what to do. But he has a very makeable spare, especially with his speed and how he flattens the ball out at these spares on the right side of the lane. He should have no trouble with the 610. Hard and straight at it. And makes it on the left. 17 pins ahead, heading for the 10th frame. Needs a spare in the 10th frame. There we see it. 143 in the 8th with a spare up in the 9th for Fair. 160 in the 8th with a spare up in the 9th for Roth. 17 pins ahead. Needs a spare or a strike here in the 10th frame to be the winner. Takes very little time. Comes in light and almost had the dinner bucket. Leaves the 2-4-5, and he needs to make this. Well, these two marks that he needs are tr challenging little marks. They're, they're not the easiest in the world, right? We saw Steve Fair miss this right now. If he would miss this, he would wind up with 186. And Steve Fair is still potential 193. He needs to make this and actually get eight pins or seven pins. And there's Jackie looking on. She knows the score. And chops the two, four, five. The same thing. Winds up with 186. And Steve Fair again has second life. Shoots it from the left. Very little turn. Hard, but still it breaks right there and chops that two right off the five. We talked about that in last week's tip, how all of us do that. Mark's reaction to that was censored. Definitely, definitely censored. Still, Steve Fair has a tough task. He needs two strikes, has to take it one at a time. He needs this first one. Ty does not get the break, leaves at 6 9, and neither bowler could take advantage of the openings that the other one gave. Well, that better change because Marshall Holman's waiting. Definitely. Marshall's got to be licking his chops over there, thinking I can do better than 180. But the lanes certainly do not look easy right at this point in the match. And it remains to be seen who's going to take over and win this tournament. Mark Roth surviving an open 10th frame.
Doesn't happen very often to give you a chance like that and that he doesn't take advantage of it. Steve Fair finishes up with 180 even. So Roth wins the first game 186 to 180. And Mark Roth and Steve Fair are talking about how confusing the lanes were. I'm sure Roth wondering what he might do to get his game back on track and get it back on track he must because in the wings waiting is Marshall Holman and we'll get to game two of the Buffalo Open on USA after these messages on your cable systems. For eight hours a day, we're doing what we like doing. Can't beat that. Want to bet? Welcome to Miller Time. It's all yours and it's all mine. to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Fresh and clean as a whistle. That's Irish Spring. Fresh and clean as a whistle. Irish Spring's green and white stripes have two truly effective deodorants. Two deodorants. And a fine, fresh scent. So you're fresh and clean as a whistle. That's Irish Spring deodorant soap. Gets you fresh and clean as a whistle. Tom really likes his room. It's in a supportive, loving home. But it's not in his real home. This is Tom's room at Boys Town. His old room was dark and dirty and cramped. His father beat him there, then locked him in. At Father Flanagan's boys' home, Tom and lots of other boys and girls are getting the special care they desperately need. But the costs add up quickly. In fact, it takes $15 every day just to give Tom the medical care, food, and clothing he must have. If you would share only $15 a month, your concern will help make sure Tom and other troubled youngsters continue to benefit from the safe, healing life Boys Town offers. Call now and get all the details on how your $15 a month will let us reach out to seriously abused, neglected, handicapped, and homeless youth. There's no obligation. The call is free, and so is the pledge information you'll receive. Please, call right away. The all-time money winner in PBA history is Earl Anthony. Number two is the man on the left, Mark Roth. And number three is the man on the right, Marshall Holman. Quite a battle we have here in game two in an effort to determine the 1983 Buffalo Open champion here on USA. And we look at the unorthodox style of Mark Roth barely surviving with Steve Fair winning by six pins after leaving the 10th frame open. And really the, uh, the emotion right now is confusion. Definitely. Uh, he was chatting with his wife, Jackie, in between there, trying to tell her how difficult these lanes were. Mark Roth is confused right at this point. I don't know whether he can get it back together. I don't know how Marshall Holman's going to bowl. Well, Marshall Holman looked... Uh, very cool this week indeed bowling a 300 game looking smooth. He's going to have to beat a man who's won 27 PBA titles and earlier I had a chance to talk with Mark Roth. Dick Weber has done it. Johnny Petraglia has done it and Mark Roth has done it. They've won three titles in a row. You're going up against someone who's trying to do that. So you know what Marshall Holman feels like. What are your thoughts bowling against him. Well, Marshall's a very good friend. We bowl doubles together, and when we get on the lanes, it's uh, me against him, and the best man's going to win, and uh, whoever wins the match, uh, he could possibly go on and win, and if, you know, things go right for me, I can go on and beat him. What did it feel like for you when you were winning those titles in a row? Well, one of them was doubles that uh, Marshall and I bowled in San Jose, and the next week was in, I think, Fresno. The last one, I needed a triple tenth to tie the match, and after I threw the triple, I just shook all over. It just, you know, a chance to win, and uh, it just drained me completely. I know, I know how he feels. He's tired mentally, physically, and uh, it could be a strain, and it could work with him or against him. So Marshall actually had a hand in you winning your three straight titles. Yes, he had. Mark, how come we haven't seen you very much on the tour? Well, I spent most of the summer home. I just got tired and I'm starting a business at home and uh, refurnishing pins. We're trying to look into a bowling center right now, and I just figured I needed a break. I bowled a lot this winter in a row. I bowled eight weeks in a row, and normally I bowl like three or four, take a week off, and I was just tired, and I feel let me get away and relax. 
Last time we saw you in the winner's circle was in Limerick, Pennsylvania last year in the regional champions classic, and you were having some physical problems. What's the situation with that now? My hand's fine, and my wrist is really well. I'm throwing a ball good this week, and uh, right now there's no physical problems. So going into tonight's TV finals, you feel like you can beat anybody? If, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> If I throw the ball, if I make good shots, I could feel like I beat anybody. All right, I need a sports update from you, Mark. Who's playing well in New York, and can the Yankees win the title in the AL East? Well, they're playing well, but uh, they need some timely hitting, I'd say. Yeah. That's what everybody needs, good pitching and timely hitting. Timely hitting is exactly what Mark Roth will need here. Interestingly enough, he needed a triple in the 10th to win that third title in a row. The week after that, he lost by two pins in his effort to win his fourth straight title. And he left a solid temp in the first ball in the 10th frame, or he would have won that fourth title uh, very easily. That was not a televised one, so it was just over at the end of 42 games there. You another see, another interesting thing here is Marshall Holman has a urethane ball out there, and he has a plastic ball out there, and he has four practice balls. He threw two with the urethane ball and two with the plastic ball, and he's decided to go with the plastic ball. The reason is that the plastic ball hooks less than the urethane ball. You see that hammer on there? That is the trademark of that particular urethane bowling ball right there. It hooks more than the plastic ball. The lanes seem to be breaking down right now, hooking early. Marshall has opted to go with the plastic ball to try and keep the ball in the pocket, and right away he wants a re-wreck. Didn't take long. In fact, I think he took one already, and this is his second one already. See, Marshall's wearing one pin on his chest. That is from the Aquafest Mr. Gaddy's Open in Austin, Texas. He won that. Here's the re-wreck. On his lapel, he's wearing a buffalo, which is the emblem of the city of buffalo's campaign we're talking proud if he wins a few more he's going to look like an explorer scout he won't be able to get up the line he'll have so many things on him right all right here we go game two i think the crowd is definitely back of marshall in this particular situation Boy, definitely. and wipes out that champion right away and we see the familiar grinch teeth <laughs> The familiar style of Marshall Holman bent over five quick steps, steady head, long slide, good follow through, tremendous lift. Now it's important to Roth's confidence to strike well here. He's got to start out well. And that's that. He's back in the pocket. Interesting. These two guys have bowled doubles together for the last four or five years, and they won the doubles one time together. Uh, they're good friends, and here they are. Mark Roth is trying to stop his good friend from winning three tournaments in a row. But he wants to win also. He hasn't won in over a year, or just about a year. Mark He's Roth, high game this tournament, 278. Low game, 156. Mark Roth, on the other hand, is using the urethane bowling ball. Right there, four pin. Good shot. Tremendous lift and loft on that shot. Kind of just drilled that to the pocket. Hey, the crowd's pretty pumped up for this one. They really are. This is a, a great match. You got your second all-time leading money winner on PBA history, bowling the third time. And both of them, the oldest guy is 32, you know, so it's amazing. These two tremendous players right here. Roth is 32, home and 28. I'm almost older than both of them put together. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Roth marks in the second frame. It's the first time since the Denver stop on the PBA Tour and the Winter Tour that all five of the TV finalists were holders of a PBA title. Between these two, we have 43 titles. 16 for Holman, 27 for Roth. Right. That's if a we, lot of money. If we had Anthony on the show, you could really count him up. Yep. Marshall wants to get out to an early lead. Can double the 10 pin lead. A little high, does not break it up. Four, six, seven. Just a little short with that shot, and the ball just hooked a little early. No break of breaking up the split. It's not the split you have nightmares about most often, but it's up there. Well, you just, uh, it's one of the impossible splits. He doesn't take any time, fires that, and opens, bounces out, which it doesn't. In 1928, he's immediately 12 pins behind. These lanes are giving the bowlers problems. They certainly are. They're not easy at this point. The scores are, are low, but they're competitive. Our last match came right down to the 10th frame. Holman trails by 12 pins. See how he puts that rosin on the ball, wipes it off of the towel. 
a lot of times he'll put the ball down after that, and that piece of tape he has on his index finger is because he gets a callus on that finger. Very little time. Gives this one more room, and it's not going to make it back. And breaks up the 2 8 10, leaves only the 2 pin. Good break for him. That would have really put him in a hole with two opens and three frames. This is what went through with Marshall many, many times in that bad string he had. Now he's switching to the urethane bowling ball. Maybe he's given up on the plastic ball right away. He's doing a little practicing here, seeing if he can figure out the pocket with this ball by shooting the two pin. And I think that uh, the next time we see Marshall, we're going to see him throwing a different bowling ball. Marshall likes to swing the ball. Maybe he figures he can get more swing with that urethane bowling ball. They could do a study on calluses by using Mark Ross' right hand. He's got a callus the size of a golf ball. Way out on the lane. 4-7 solid. He's talking to himself right now. What do I got to do, he says. Starting to get lonely out there. The ball's a little tight. Again, he's in close to the third arrow. Watch the two pin, Allen. It'll go right over the 4-7. Boom. Right around it. Too much power. Those pins are no match for him. Keeps the match within 10 pins. At the 4-7. Has the spare easily. Ross stays clean. It's a 10-pin lead. And here's how it looks. You can see the difference there. Holman 28 in the second with a spare in the third. Roth 38 also with a spare in the third. Roth going to the left lane. Lane 47 here at throughway lanes. Look, it's right near the New York State throughway, appropriately enough. Yeah, park it, park it. And trips the four pin out of there this time. Every shot, virtually the same. Got the four pin out of there this time. And the sweep does, does not get that pin out of there. As we see Roth throw the ball. He doesn't know whether it's going to hold or not. He's watching. Watching. And all right. <laughs> he waited till it was sure. <laughs> till the last second, right. And that four pin that he tripped, the uh, sweep on the machine didn't sweep it back. And so it's in the right hand channel right now. And Marshall's waiting until one of the mechanics in the back will use a pole to get it out of the way. And so nothing's distracting from his concentration. And sure enough, as I predicted, Marshall has switched back now to the urethane ball. He needs to move further inside. And this ball's going to hook more than the plastic ball. Holman's and closer to the fourth arrow and doesn't make it up. So he made the adjustment, but it was, a, it was a guess at best. It was an educated guess at best, and the ball didn't quite make it back. Leaves the 2-8, a very difficult spare. Marshall trying to win three in a row, and he can't find the pocket. Wipes that rosin off the ball. Needs, needs to make this spare badly. Puts those fingers in. He'll tuck that little finger there at the last second. Takes very little time. And makes it. He thought it might hook by it. He just listened. He didn't even want to watch. He heard it. He could tell from the sound that he had made the spare. You know, one of the biggest educations I ever had at bowling was in 1967. I made the championship round, and Carmen Salvino was on the same show as we see the scoreboard. And the difference of 12 pins with Roth having a strike in the fourth and Holman a spare. And Carmen lost in one of the early matches, and he came back, and he was laying down on the set area where he couldn't see the pins of the bowler's bowling, and he called every leave from sound. He could tell whether it was a four pin or a two, four, five, simply from the sound. Solid eight. And Marshall says, oh, the frames are running out. But he's in the pocket anyway. At least he got that ball into the pocket. 65 in the fourth. If he makes this, he have a spare in the fifth. Roth is definitely in the driver's seat. Now when you make the TV finals, you only get 10 frames to find the pocket. Makes the eight pitch. And that brings us to the midway point of game two between these two giants of the PBA Tour, Marshall Holman and Mark Roth. And right now it is Mark Roth with a 13-pin lead. We're coming to you from Thruway Lanes in Cheektowaga, New York, and we'll be right back. The 
80s, the decade of physical fitness, and suddenly sore muscle relief enters a new era with Sports Cream, a different kind of pain relieving rub. Unlike other rubs, Sports Cream doesn't feel hot going on because it penetrates for deep relief without heat. Unlike other rubs, Sports Cream smells light and clean because it doesn't need strong liniment odor to work. Sports Cream, fast, effective relief for sore muscles without heat or odor. It's the pain reliever of the 80s. We are USA One. Taking charge by unleashing a Chevrolet the competition can't touch. Camaro, flat out selling every other 2 plus 2 sports coupe on the road today. And now Camaro is led by a new standard 5 speed 5 liter Z28. The hot selling Chevy Camaro. It still leaves everything but its shadow behind. USA One is taking charge. Olympic stain. We've got the inside on outside protection. Inside every can of Olympic stain with weather screen are specially treated oils and additives that actually repel water and preserve wood. Inside every can is the experience of over half a century. That's why Olympic protects the outside of more homes than any other stain. Olympic stain. We've got the inside on outside protection. After you win a tough race, you want to take it easy. But you don't want to slow down. Welcome to Time. It's all yours and it's all mine. Bring your thirst to self right here. The rich, smooth taste of Miller beer is what you have in mind. So welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Al Troutwick back at Thruway Lanes, seated next to a PBA bowler, Mike Durbin. Of course, I am not. And seated next to Mike is Art Trask, who's helping us keep the numbers right here. Now, Art's a PBA bowler, too, and they're both sitting here telling me, hey, we're only as good as the lane maintenance people. <laughs> That's an inside secret. You're not supposed to reveal that. As he goes Brooklyn and leaves the five pin. Right now, the lanes are definitely not on the easy side, and the bowlers are definitely having a lot of trouble adjusting. Mark has just left it. We'll see where this ball hits. Hits about board 17 and breaks right now. And it almost had a runaway Brooklyn. Has an easy spare. He can practice a little bit on this spare. The bowlers as picky about the lane conditions as a skater is about his skates. And he did practice. He moved a little deeper and that ball skated on him. <laughs> Skate, skated, yes. And uh, <laughs> converts the five. No, don't start on me now. 13 pins, Mark Ross ahead. He's filling the frames. He's sometimes this is what we call right now a grind out condition. And he's doing what's necessary as he takes another re rack on lane 47. He's filling the frames. He's keeping the ball in the fairway, so to speak, although that last shot kind of got in the left hand rough, but he got out of way, got away with it. Becoming very poetic in this game, aren't you? Way out on the lane, comes in right and gets that wall shot. <laughs> Keeps the lead at 13 pins. Keeps the lead. Straight swing of Roth. Lots of Roth. Watch the head pin go to the wall, come back and clean out everything. Four pin the last to fall. Marshall Holman's got to turn the motor on and get things going. He was light on this lane. The last frame and the fourth frame, we'll see what kind of an adjustment he makes. Week 10, good shot. The pins are just not cooperating. And again, he's got four frames left, and he's falling further behind with every frame. See the disappointment as he watches this go down and says, will you carry? Oh. He knows it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher. I watched Marshall dip his hand into his right pocket. I wonder whether he was getting a little touch on that rabbit's foot. And he almost missed the temp in. He says, no, never a doubt. Not worried about it. He's got a pocket full of good luck charms in there. Well, you can have all the good luck charms you want, but you still got to knock down the pins. And right now, he's got 84 in the fifth with a spare in the sixth versus 98 and a strike up, 14 pins. And Roth's got the opportunity to double. Marshall's had one strike and hasn't had a strike since the first frame. 
What we're seeing is how difficult it is to win three, BA t three PBA titles in a row. It's just so tough against the competition out here. You've got to have the brakes going for you. Right now, today, they aren't going for him so far, but it could turn around. Breaks up the split, leaves the 6-10, and he puts his hand in his pocket. My wife always tells me when I do that, I'm, she knows that I'm down. When that hand goes in the pocket right away, that I'm down. Takes the plastic ball out to shoot, cross lane at the 6-10. And barely gets it. 16 pins down. Right now, he has to hope that Roth stumbles. And how about this? In seven frames of bowling, Marshall Holman has a strike, an open frame, and five spares. A little different than last week when he had 290 the final game. Holman up by 16, uh, trailing by 16. Here's Roth in the seventh. Roth can really put him away now. This is the place where he really wants to jump on it. Mark Ross definitely in the driver's seat right now. 26 pins ahead. Can increase it to 36 with a double or a triple. He watches this. Now watch him. He thinks the nine pin's going to stand out. Then it falls. <laughs> he's all ready to be mad, and then he's happy. I know the feeling. Another re-rack he took on lane 47. I think that's his allotted three for the game. There's something wrong over there. Well, what'll happen? It could be just a little thing that the three pin could be just a little bit in. And the bowler thinks that he's going to leave a solid 10 if he hits solid in the pocket. There's that wall shot. Really has put the, put the putty to him. 36 pins ahead. And Mark knows this is in the pocket. Running to the right. Smacks those hands. We saw Marshall Holman doing a lot of that last week and seen very little of it this week. You can't smack your hands on spares. You got to start getting strikes. And he's in the must strike situation. Absolutely must strike. And he does, finally. Marshall's a champion. He wants to go down fighting. If he's going to lose, go down, go down fighting. He's still potential 212 if he can strike out. Right now, Mark Roth is going at a 218 pace. All Marshall can do is say, hey, get all I can get and see what he does. But he must strike on this ball. If he wants to win three tournaments in a row, he has to win on, has to strike on this ball. Roth's just fiddling with his Rosenbach sitting there, not paying too much attention. Again, all these bowlers know how to keep score. Light. Doesn't make it. Is it going to get a break? Almost. Well, that's it. Marshall Holman is not going to win three tournaments in a row. Shoots the two pin. And he gave it a valiant effort. It just was uh, not to be the thing. Mark Roth working on a triple in the ninth. Right now, the best Holman can do is 192 if he strikes out in the 10th frame. Roth just basically needs to show up the next two frames, keep the ball in the lane. And I think uh, that somebody talked in the middle of his approach or somebody moved, and Mark was visibly upset. Leaves the 2-5, which is relatively easy spare. He is really upset at this point. He is angry. Mark always seems to have kind of a scowl on his face, but right there, somebody says something to someone. Someone talked in the middle of his approach, and he's really upset. Wasn't us. Hopefully it wasn't us. No, he'd have looked at us. Uh, whoever it was, he'd looked at him. Right now, though, he needs to forget that and get the spare. He switches to a plastic ball to shoot the spare. He chopped it with the other ball and makes it. Luckily for whoever it was who spoke, the match was almost out of reach at that point. There we see Jackie. Doesn't really look like she's <laughs> really into it, does she? She saves her emotions perhaps for the championship games, of which she has seen Mark win 27. But Frustratingly for him, he has not won one of the four major PBA titles. 
Our scorekeeper, Artress, says that he needs seven pins. He gets a strike, that's it. Artress will be the winner. Those four major titles, the Firestone Tournament of Champions, the Masters, the U.S. Open, and the PBA National. Holman decided at the last minute to come to Buffalo last week on the air. He said, yeah, I'm coming. Then he said, no, I'm not. Then he said, yes, I am. And finally, he showed up. Well, he had to come here to try and make it. Oh. Ross seems to have found it now. Strikes out here for 226 if he gets one more. Well, he'll feel a lot better after this game than he did after the first game, I'm sure. Well, he's got the momentum going now. He's going against another very hot bowler on the PBA Tour, Tom Milton now with Holman out of the way. Milton now can really jump into that bowler of the year race if he can win two matches. But right now, Ross seems to put it all together and he's going to be tough to beat. 226. And great sportsmanship there. Marshall grabbed his hand and gave Mark a hug. And they remained friends, even though he was trying to beat his brains out. Marshall just never could find the pocket. The lanes were just difficult. Marshall will win $4,500 for his fourth place finish. Worth the trip coming up here? I would say so. Right. That puts him uh, over 93,000 for the year. And he still has an excellent chance to go over 100,000 for the third time in his PBA career. Marshall's had a, a, f a fabulous 1983. In the 23 tournaments this year, he has only missed cashing three times. In other words, he has won some money in 20 of those 23 of appearances. That is uh, remarkable out here. Just very difficult to do. Makes the 2-5, finishes with 182. And tried for three in a row, but couldn't do it. And Tom Milton is waiting to face Mark Roth when we return to Thruway Lanes in Chicktawaga after this. Playboy. It brings you the best of everything. Behind the pages of Playboy, you'll find the authors who create the best sellers. Do you think you've had a fear of success? Interviewers who reveal the person behind yes, the have. personality. And, uh, but I don't anymore. Award-winning sports analysts and forecasters who give you an up-close look at the teams, the players, and all the action. Playboy's cartoonists point out the humor in today's world with a rare mix of art and wit. <laughs> and then there's Playboy's photographers, masters at capturing the sensuous beauty of the world's most breathtaking nice. women. Lift the shoulder just slightly. Good. Playboy also tips you off to the latest styles. Tunes you into the hottest sounds and stirs your spirit of adventure with exciting new ideas. Informative, entertaining, and provocative. Playboy, the one magazine that gives you a monthly ticket to the best of the good life. And right now, you can get 12 months of Playboy delivered right to you for only $18.50. That's half the newsstand price. So enjoy the very best, the wit, wisdom, and imagination of today's most creative people. Become a Playboy subscriber and step into the exciting world of Playboy. To order your subscription, here's all you do. Just phone toll free. 1-800-USA-1000. Call now and get 12 issues of Playboy for only $18.50. Save $18.50 off the $37 newsstand price. So act now. Phone toll free. 1-800-USA-1000. That's toll free. 1-800-USA-1000. You're watching the PBA Summer Tour on USA Network, coast to coast. Al Troutwig along with Mike Durbin as we're coming to you from Buffalo, New York, more specifically Cheek to Wagga. And we take a moment now to update you on some of the things that happened here in Buffalo at the Buffalo Open and at the PBA Tour in general. First of all, bowlers 6 through 24 
They bowled well, but not good enough to make the TV finals. Finishing sixth is our friend and statistician, Mark Williams, who lost out in the final game last night. Seventh went to Mark Baker. Eighth to local favorite here, Tom Baker. Jeff Bellinger, friend of Tom Milton, who's on the show today, finished ninth. Walter Ray Williams was in tenth. Butch Soper in his second consecutive final finished 11th. Art Trast, our statistician today, 12th. Storm DeVincent, 13th. Breaking a slump, Tom Hudson finished 14th. Daryl Bauer, 15th. Alvin Liu making his sixth finals in the last seven tournaments, finished 16th. Jim Miller, 17th, with Roger Haskell in 18th. Mike Steinbeck in 19th place. Dave Tulick finished 20th. Tom Laskow, 21st. John Chaircourt finished 22nd. Local favorite here, Mike Fiedler, finished 23rd. And Steve Martin held up all the rest in 24th place. And as far as the top five bowlers are concerned, they are bowling for prize money in the following amounts. The fifth place bowler, the one who loses the first game, Steve Fair or Mark Roth, will win $4,000. $4,500 to the bowler who finishes fourth. Third place, $5,500. Second place, $7,500. And then the big jump to the first place check of $13,000. Six rounds here, a lot of different leaders. Right, our leaders round by round. The first is led by Sam Zurich. The second round, Walter Ray Williams came up there. Then Sam took over again in the third round and fourth. Mark Williams, who wound up finishing sixth, was the leader after five rounds. And Sam Zurich again was the leader after six. Now, Mike, last week you dazzled us with your bowling skill, of which you have a lot. Mike Durbin tries to do it again with his bowling tip for this week. Mike? Today we're going to talk about one of the most difficult spares in the sport of bowling. That is the washout. What we're looking at right now is the 1-2-4-10. There are many other variations of the washout. There's the 1-2-4-8-10, the 1-2-10, even the 1-10, and of course your left-handed combinations such as the 1-3-6-7. They all fall under the category of the washout. Unofficially, I guess a washout would be defined as a split with a head pin standing but officially it's not a split because anytime the head pin is standing, it is not a split. However, we're really not interested in all that. We're interested in how to convert it. And what I'm going to show you today is just one of the many methods there are to shoot the washout. This is right along the same method that we looked at last week to make the 245. Remember last week we talked about using our strike target, moving four boards to the right and throwing the ball over the strike target to make the 245? Well, we're going to again use our strike target for the washout, only we're going to move five boards to the right. Now, we'll set up a hypothetical situation. Here we are. Let's suppose I'm standing right here for a strike on board 16, and I'm aiming for the second arrow out there to get a strike, and I leave the washout. Now, I want to move five boards to the right, all the way over here to board 11, and use that same second arrow out there as my target to make the washout. I'm going to try and do it for you right now. I get the ball. I was standing on board 16. I moved the five boards all the way over to board 11. Set myself up here. I'm going to try and make the washout now, and hopefully I can make it. All right, I made the washout that time. But what can happen when I hit it on the left side of the head pin like that is sometimes I can wrap that, ten, that head pin right around the 10 pin. It's just one of the many bad breaks that happen in the sport of bowling. The important thing to remember is to move five boards to your right, use that strike target, and you're going to make your share of the washouts. We'll see you again next week. Some of our upcoming events. This week we were in Cheektowaga, New York, and next week we're going to head right out of the country to Windsor, Ontario for the Molson Bowling Challenge. Then we'll head on to Waukegan, Illinois for the Waukegan Open and wind up the summer tour in Canton, Ohio with a real fun event, the PBA Seniors Championship. As Mike said, we're in Cheektowaga, New York with the Buffalo Open. I guess just living here makes everybody that lives here a better speller. At least I hope they are because that's a tough one to spell for sure. We'll get back to bowling with the PBA on USA in just a moment. one of my bigger days. <laughs> Let me buy a beer. Sure. Hey. Ah, these fans, I love them. When I came in, they didn't recognize me at first, but then when I told them who I was, next thing you know, they're buying me my favorite beer, light beer from Miller. They know us ex-big leaguers drink light because it's got a third less calories than their regular beer, it's less filling, and it tastes great. Thanks. Hey, it's a pleasure to buy a beer for a great pitcher like Whitey Ford. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so I lied. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hey, Whitey, I thought you were a lefty. Oh, that's right. <laughs> 
In our world of endless imagination, anything can happen. And those of you who wear Levi's jeans know what I'm talking about. Because anywhere our minds can go, we can follow too. Go ahead, chase a dream. In Levi's jeans. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. With Chevy S10 Maxi Cab, there's never been an extended cab pickup like it before. You can't even get one in a Ford Ranger or Toyota. Taking charge of people space, Maxi Cab with available rear jump seats has behind the seat room Datsun King Cab can't match. Taking charge with up to 40% more cab load space than Datsun King Cab. Now choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and Maxi Cabs. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. In the beginning, man's feet walked free, but the road to civilization was paved, so man developed shoes. Soon after that, man developed athlete's foot. He got Now at last, there's Mycotin. Mycotin cures athlete's foot. It's the only athlete's foot medicine you can buy with Myconazole, an ingredient available for the first time without a doctor's prescription. Mycotin in spray, powder, or cream. Mycotin, the end of the road for athlete's foot. And Mark Roth, the 32-year-old veteran on the left side of your screen, moves into another hot seat, bowling against Tom Milton, who's 27 years old, from St. Petersburg, Florida. He's won three titles this year, and a victory here in Buffalo would slide him right up next to Earl Anthony for Bowler of the Year honors. And well, consideration for it. Right. He's He's got a formidable task in front of him. Mark Roth seems to have, have found the lanes, plus Roth was the one who defeated Tom Milton last year in Limerick when when uh, Roth won his uh, last PBA title. He defeated Tom Milton for the title that day. So maybe he has a psychological edge over Tom Milton. Roth starts it off. Didn't get the ball as far out of the lane and it hooked too soon. Leaves only the six pin. Breaks up the split. Mark is filling the frames here, and that's the important thing. Keep it clean. Well, the big story in bowling for the past two weeks has been the story of Marshall Holman. Having bowled a 182, he has ended the story himself. Well, couldn't go on forever. Had to end sometime. No, but boy, did he have a great streak. For Tom Milton, as Roth makes the six pin. The viewers out there are going to see a tall bowler, one who throws an enormous hook, throws slow speed, but he gets a tremendous hook on the back end of that ball. If anybody can put the ball in the channel and make it hop out and strike. Tom Milton could do it, right? Now, he's not going skin diving after the game. He's got a little piece of wetsuit on his elbow to keep that pinched nerve in his right elbow warm. Gives it room. There it comes. Good shot. Leaves only the four pin. Started that ball off close to the fourth arrow and it must have got out about the eighth board down the lane. It gets about five feet in front of the, the pack and makes See a how, left turn. How tall he stands. Five steps ball right in time. Good knee bend. Good lift. Tremendous hook. Very smooth. He's very cool under pressure too. Very square game. Just amazes me though how much that ball hooks at the back end. That one didn't hook nearly as much as we've seen some of them. Tom Milton has won three PBA titles, all and, of them this year. And he's asking for a re-rec on lane 47. Seems that uh, if there's one thing all the bowlers are agreed about out there is that they don't like the rack on lane 47. Last year we saw Tom Milton in the PBA Regionals Classic in Limerick, Pennsylvania, where he lost to Mark Roth. This year he doesn't have to face him. Well, he's facing him right now. Right. I mean in the championship game. You see how Tom cups that wrist. See how it's cupped underneath that ball? He keeps it that way all the way through the approach and even in the release. Puts tremendous side roll on that ball. And here it comes. Leaves only the two pin. The left lane appears to be a bit tighter than the right lane. The ball didn't quite make it back. Tom has kind of a <laughs> frown or <laughs> scowl on his face there. So he picks up a different ball to shoot the spare with. Green one. Easy spare here. And he makes it easily. 19 in the first. One pin behind as Ross steps up into second frame. 
Mark averaged a 218 on the TV pair this week. A little over two pins better than his overall average. Gets it out there. Solid. Eight. Oh. Woo. We saw Holman leave one of those last game. And they can take the wind out of your sails in a hurry. He makes a great shot here. Six steps well out over the foul line. Ball about the 16th board. And the ball will chop the five straight back. See it take that five straight back off the eight there. It's amazing. It's always a shock when we leave it. I'm waiting for someone to get on a roll, and it doesn't look as though the lanes are going to let anybody get going. Well, Rolf is grinding him out in winning matches. That's the important thing to him. He doesn't care whether he does it with 180s or 280s. Here's a good and he wants a re-rack on the left lane. Kind of shakes his head, says, another one. Mark's been a PBA member for 13 years. Made a lot of money in 13 years. He certainly did. A lot of money. Won a lot of tournaments. Wants another one. He Won. has a, a pin refinishing business, Mike. What exactly is that? Well, that's where you repair pins that uh, have been used in a bowling center, and the proprietor wants to keep them, and it's less expensive to repair them, and it is go out and buy new pins. Yes, I understand Mark's very interested in it, and... Uh, as, uh, as we see Jackie again looking on, has really gotten into the expertise of it and the selling aspect of it. And now he's beginning to run him out all while Marshall Holder. Solid eight and then solid back in the pocket for a strike. Difference between this one and the first frame is the loft on the ball. Well out over the foul line, it goes further down the lane, breaks later, and watch the six get that ten. Nudges that 10 right straight over across. Mark Ross' thumb ever gets stuck. He's going right down to the pins. <laughs> Here's Tom Milton, even in the third frame. Way out there. Here it comes. That looks he like it was in slow motion. Three, four, six. Starts it out about the 20th board, out to maybe the seventh board. Now it makes a left-hand turn, but chops right through there. Almost had the seven pin with it. I saw him leave it three out of four frames in one game this week. And he made it once. And, oh, I thought he had it. He nicked that pin. It looked like it wiggled. As I watched him do that in the qualifying round or in the finals, I was thinking to myself, you know, he left that same thing three out of four frames, and I was thinking that I haven't left it in my entire PBA career. As we see the scoreboard, he has 45 in the third with a split, and Roth 39 in the second. Roth's up by 14 points right at this point. The 2-4-8, and Milton is just lost. Again, the lanes are very tough today, and everybody has been having trouble. Even Roth in the first game. Tries to give this one room. The left lane tighter. See, it starts in around the 20th board. Goes all the way up maybe to the 5th or 6th board and just can't make it back. That's a lot of boards to cover on a bowling lane. And try and put the ball in the pocket. Makes the spare. Difficult spare. Makes it easily. Roth up 14 pins. Can increase it to 24 if he can double here on the right lane. And Mark is an opportunist. He knows when his opponent is struggling. He has that ability to be able to just jump on him. It's that called a killer instinct, and he definitely has it. Doesn't get the break off the wall. Keeps Milton in the match. But right now, Tom looks like he's lost, and Roth has got the pocket on both lanes. It's just a matter of whether Mark can carry. I don't know whether Milton is going to change balls or what he's going to do. Cross lane at the seven pin. Very little hook. <laughs> Had a measure just right, didn't he? He shakes his head, says, never a doubt. I wasn't worried, he says. And the full house here at Thruway Lanes, ooing and eyeing through that shot. They began arriving here three hours before the championship round began. Some diehard fans here. 17th year the PBA has been in Buffalo. Right. I believe it was last year that uh, 
Tom Baker made the show here and the fans were really in a state of euphoria there. Tom Milton with that open in the third. He'd like to have that back. Way out of the lane. Light. Two, four, five. That one never grabbed at all. He just didn't get his thumb out of that ball clean. He gets the ball way out of the lane, and sometimes when he does that, the thumb doesn't exit clean. When we let a bowling ball go, the thumb has to come out first, and the fingers lift it second. And Roth just never got the lift on that ball that he was looking for. Now he's using the same ball to shoot the 2-4-5. In the ninth frame of the last game, he switched balls. Straightens it out. He has that ability at those spares to be able to throw hard and straight. Makes the spare. He has 76 in the fourth frame. And that translates into an 11 pin lead for Mark Roth. And we'll continue. The winner of this will go on to the championship match at the $100,000 Buffalo Open. We'll be back in a moment. USA one and proving it in Chevy Cavalier Cavalier's high compression two liter engine with electronic fuel injection gives you more power than the three leading imports and even though Cavalier sedan is shorter outside than Honda Accord sedan it gives you six cubic feet more passenger room inside plus more room in the trunk Chevy Cavalier from America's sales leader USA one is taking charge Boys of Summer on the USA Network's exclusive Thursday Night Baseball. Ask the independent investors you know the name of the largest discount stock broker in America, and they'll tell you Charles Schwab and Company. Over 50 offices and more customers than any other discount broker. Ask the independent investors why Charles Schwab and Company is the largest, and they'll tell you up to 76% discount on commissions when you buy or sell securities. Place your orders from anywhere in the country, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Computer technology that speeds order entry and executions. Accounts protected up to two and a half million dollars. Low interest rates when you borrow on your marginable securities and no salesperson will call ever. Charles Schwab, the largest for very good reason. Ask the independent investors and they'll tell you. Go with America's number one discount stockbroker, Charles Schwab. For your free information kit and discount rate schedule, call this toll-free number now, 800-228-6606. That's 800-228-6606. There must be a solution to lanes 47 and 48 here through the lanes. Tom Milton and Mark Roth wondering who may find the answer first. Well, again, Roth's doing what has to be done. He's filling the frames. He's bowling clean games and uh, getting enough strikes to come out winners. Milton down by 11 pins in the fifth. And he had disastrous lead on this lane the last time. And that ball actually rolled out at the pocket. When a bowling ball starts going left, it's gathering momentum, and sometimes it uses it all up, and it actually rolled out and went straight. We're going to be able to get a view, good view of this as he throws it a little deeper. Now watch the ball quit right at the end. It's turning left now, and it actually goes straight right at that point at the end. Sure made a left-hand turn before it went straight, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> and there we see 76 to 65, 11-pin difference. And he wants a re-rack on this left lane. If he can double here, he can cut it to one pin. Mike, any idea how much the ball moves right and left as it goes through the, the stack? You mean as it goes through Yeah, the as pins? the ball goes through and it hits the pins, I can, you can see it move just a little to the right, then a little to the left. Any idea how much it moves as it goes through? Well, actually, the ball only hits four pins as it's going through, Alan. It hits the one, three, the five, and the nine. That's the only four pins that the bowling ball hits as it goes through the pins in the pit. And then hopefully the chain reaction. Right. Milton in the sixth. There's just a lot of room. And it hooked early. Boy, it's amazing. He threw that one really wide, and it still grabbed too soon. Leaves the three, six. And Tom, I just think, doesn't know what to do. 
he's just getting such a violent reaction that it's either light or high. He can't put the ball in the one three pocket. So is it straight at the three six and two straight it goes right by and he misses the spare and Mark Ross just licking his chops right now. Tom here much straighter wrist not the lift and turn that he normally has and it doesn't bite the lane and it's gone. Goodbye. Switch balls to a harder ball. Well, now the windows wide open again. Let's see if Mark Roth climbs on in. 23 pins ahead. In deep on this right lane. Here's a pitch on this time. And Mark with that familiar style and just kind of sweeps him out. He turned around the other way. Says you better fall. We should point out that as as Marshall Holman left center stage here at three way lanes he received a standing ovation from the folks here. They've been following his story all week long. Can increase it to 33 with another one and breaks up the split right now. Mark Roth when he does make the mistakes is breaking up the splits and getting spares and that's the difference in the matches. He's throwing more balls in the pocket than anyone else, but he's also getting the breaks to, to be able to fill those frames on the bad shots. Shakes his head. He knew he could really put him away if he could double there. Mike, you watch a lot of sports, and so do I, and there are certain sports where people from certain areas of the world or the country perform the sport in a specific way. I think people from the New York area or the Northeast perhaps bowl in a very aggressive way as compared to some of the bowls from elsewhere in the country. You agree with me or, or not? It does appear that way from some of the players we've seen like Joe Berardi yeah. and, and Mark Roth that, that they have these aggressive styles. A lot of them probably grow up on lanes that hook quite a bit and had to learn to throw hard at an early age. Now Milton still down by a bunch. 23 pins right now. Hit this lane the last time. Here it comes. And he trips the four out of there. That ball actually again rolled out at the end and enabled that two pin to trip the four out. And he's got to figure out something on this left lane that he picked to finish on. You see the difference there? 116 to 93. 23 pins. And he's going to the eighth frame. Milton now is still potential. 213 if he would strike all the way out. But he's got to try and get something together in this left lane. He hasn't hit the pocket on this left lane as Roth looks off at the score. Right now, it's not a matter of so much of who can string the strikes as who can fill the frames. Milton thought that ball was going to be in the pocket and it still made a left turn, leaves the four pin. He moved a little deeper on the lane and it's still hooked too soon. So he grabs that green ball to shoot at the spare. And there's a pin in the right hand channel. He's asking the tournament director if he can go ahead and shoot the spare with that pin there. And Harry Golden gave him the OK. Converts the four pin and he's running out of frames. The best he can get right now is 193. And Mark Roth is going at a 196 pace if he would strike spare the rest of the way out. Once again we have a pin laying in the channel. It's removed. And once again Roth is is in the position to really be able to put his opponent away. And as Jackie looks on, she hasn't changed her expression, has she? No. <laughs> and right there, pretty shot, pretty shot. Wants a re rack on the left lane. Wants a re rack on lane 47. Deep inside. Straight swing, good slide, way out on the lane, about the 17th board. Now watch the six pin here, Alan. Just snap that 10 right out. Again, remember when you see that happen with the bowler, you know that he had good lift on the ball. And there we see it, 136 to 113, 23 pins ahead. Night frame action. We saw Jackie Mark's wife. She wears a necklace with three X's on it. It's a triple in the 10th. There he is. And a 10 pin fall. Roth, is the 10 pin going to fall? Yes. Smacks those hands that we saw Marshall do. And right now, Tom Milton is faced with the unenviable task of having to strike out and hope that Roth opens. 
four pin. Good shot, and it appears that it's not going to be either Tom Milton or Marshall Holman winning this tournament. Roth looking on. And same. Can he defeat Sam Zurich to win his 28th PBA title? The best that Milton can do is 182 if he would strike out. All Mark Roth needs to do is show up for the 10th frame and stay behind the foul line, keep the ball in the lane, and he's going to win his third match and go on to bowl for his 28th title. And finally, Tom hits that left lane when it doesn't matter. Interestingly enough, it was the lane he picked to finish on also. And this is the first time that he got a strike on it. Actually, the first time that he hit the pocket. He got close to the pocket in the eighth frame. It's enough to drive you crazy when things don't work the way they worked in practice. Well, he was having trouble toward the end of practice, too. It just uh, looked like he was, he was kind of lost. He was hitting them when he first came out, and then they seemed to break down, and he had more trouble. Just a little late. If he had put it together a little sooner, he could have, because uh, he seemed to hit the right lane a couple of times anyway. Interestingly enough, in the match right now, Milton has four strikes and is going for his fifth, and Roth only has four strikes. The difference is spares. And the open frame that Milton left in the third. And the sixth. Out was 182 and a triple in the 10th. That's, too the little, score too Marshall, late. that's the score Marshall Holman had. Well, when you get scores like that bold against you, right now I don't think he's had over 182 bold against him. It's not too hard to win. Yeah. And breaks up the split one more time. Leaves only the six pin. It's, okay. it's enough to be a winner. Tom Milton saying an opportunity to win his fourth title of the year, go by the boards. Chance to, to really put him in the running for bowler of the year. Even though he still is in the running, he has more victories than anyone else this year on the PBA Tour. Still lots of tournaments to come. Mark, he strikes on the fill ball here, will wind up a 205, win by 23 pins. And another clean game. He had a clean game last game, clean game this game. He's filling those frames. Search will bowl one game for thirteen thousand dollars when we come back on USA. We are USA One, taking charge with tough, easy to own transportation like Chevy Chevette. While Ford's eighty-three base escort suggested retail price went up, the lowest price Chevy Chevette held the line. In fact, this two-door Chevette is priced over $600 less than Escort L two-door. And Chevette has millions more owner-driven miles behind it. Chevy Chevette, from America's sales leader. Now, choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 Chevy Chevettes. In the beginning, man's feet walked free, but the road to civilization was paved, so man developed shoes. Soon after that, man developed athlete's foot. He got Now at last, there's Mycotin. Mycotin cures athlete's foot. It's the only athlete's foot medicine you can buy with Myconazole, an ingredient available for the first time without a doctor's prescription. Mycotin in spray, powder, or cream. Mycotin, the end of the road for athlete's foot. Look, if you rip this expensive car seat, you'd have to mend it with tape. But when new car manufacturers mend rips on the assembly line, they look like this, good as new. Now, you can use the same fabulous process at home. New Minute Mender makes almost invisible repairs quickly, easily on vinyl and leather and fabric. Imagine, from this 
to this in minutes. Use Minute Mender on car seats, vinyl tops, furniture, luggage, boots, jackets, toys, wraps, briefcases, glass cases, and dozens of other things. Minute Mender, just $12.95 with an absolute money-back guarantee. Act now, and we'll include free this valuable fabric repair kit. Yours free with amazing Minute Mender. Don't wait. Call now for rush delivery. Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-USA-1000 in Georgia 1-800-222-7272 or send $12.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Minute Mender, Box 49648, Atlanta, Georgia, 30359, or call now. 26-year-old Sam Zurich from Huntington, New York, will bowl Mark Roth, who seems to have found the pocket now with two big wins in a row. It's the championship match at the $100,000 Buffalo Open. The winner to receive $13,000. They call Sam Zurich Mike Shortcut Sam. There will be no shortcuts, I, I don't think, at least in this match. I don't, it's hard to find a shortcut around Roth, uh, especially he seems, he seems to be putting on a little bit of weight there. So. <laughs> Well, he's why he watches a lot of hockey on USA. You know, it's tough not to snack when you watch hockey. I know that I'm having that same problem myself. So starts off with a weak ten, a pin rolling around, and a little short, and a little soft. That would have been one of the longest Those messenger pins. Yeah. Keeps it in the pocket again. Again, he's in the fairway, waiting for the ball to get back. Again, he'll move left hard and straight at the 10 pin. And see that pin bounce up, it would have made the 7 10. <laughs> well, that's what he's been doing throughout this TV finals. He's been scrambling for par. Well, those count just as well. Now, Sam Zurich. Rich is part of his name. He'll be $13,000 richer if he wins here. Well, he's thinking more about the victory than he has the money. About the third arrow, the ball slides by. Less hook than Roth, leaves the two pin. Very sweet game that Sam Zurich has here. Every pit, five step, very short first step, falls right in time. Watch at the top of the third step. Good slide, a little short on that slide. Good follow through. But the only thing I see there is that just he looks just a hair crowded at the foul line if he had moved back on the approach maybe three or four inches. Sam has averaged six pins higher than Roth over the course of the week. Uh oh. Wow. <laughs> Hooked right by that's just the thing he did not want to happen is to miss an easy spare to start out the match and put himself in a hole right away. The lanes are tough enough as it is. You saw that coming right away. Didn't well, you? well he was a little short when he let it go and I knew that ball was going to hook. And he, see, what that can do to you, Alan, is it upsets you mentally. I mean, you had a, a specific mindset, and then all of a sudden, your game plan, everything is blown in the first frame. You've got to reconnoiter and try and get yourself, your composure back together. It's hard to do. Pretty shot. Pretty shot there. Boy, he did. That's the mark of a champion. You make a mistake like that, you put it behind you, and you come right back and make a good shot. See how smooth he is. Watch the swing. Now watch the follow through. Straight through. Watch this ball saw that five right into the seven. Just barely got it, but it was enough. Well, you fall out of the saddle, you get right back on. Here's yes. Roth. Yeah, that's true. Good loft. Took in early. And again, hits that nose, no split. Leaves the six, nine, ten. And he's, sh he's shaking his hand as though his hand or wrist is sore. He's left of target here, and the ball bites too soon. It's going to almost cross over to the Brooklyn side. And he comes back shaking his hand. So his thumb or, or his wrist did bother him. He had trouble with tendonitis in his wrist there for quite a while. And I don't know whether that's bothering him again right now or not. Straight at the 6 9 10, it chops it right off. Wow. That's one of the dangers of shooting a straight shot at that spare, is that it's possible to chew up, chop the 6 off the 9. Doesn't happen very often. I've done it because I throw straight all the time and whack you see him straighten that ball out and it chops a six right off the nine. It was a matter of millimeters. But what it does is it puts Sam Zurich in the lead sitting on the bench. Back to the left lane. Light leaves the two five. 
found out that uh, I've been informed that Mark has a callus on the palm of his hand. He gets one right underneath his index finger, and that's uh, bothering him some, that callus is. It's about the size of a silver dollar. It seems like a lot of these power players get that particular callus in that particular spot. You can see that I don't have one there at all, so. Soft touch Durbin. Right. Straight at the 2-5. Makes it easily. Shaking his hand again. But right now, Zurich with a strike up. Again, this right lane appears to be hooking a little earlier than the left lane. Sammy's seen a mistake that he made and then a mistake Roth made, and now he can really jump on him. Look at those eyes. Look at that target. Head very still. Right there. And gets a love tap on that 10. Big break right there. Gets that double. Certainly contrasting styles between these two bowlers. See, his speed is much softer than Ross. He strokes the ball much more. Same area of the lane. Now watch this six pin. Goes over and falls right on the 10. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, you gotta take advantage. Now he needs, he's thinking in his mind right now is, I gotta break there, take advantage of it. He's up 13 pins, can increase it to 23 if he can jump on that break. Light, light. Ball just would not make it back. Leaves the 2-8. He tried to help that one back and didn't get the lift at the bottom of that swing that he needed. Has a difficult spare now. Remember, he missed the two pin by itself in the first frame, and now he's got the 2-8, which is tougher. Don't think he's not thinking back to that first frame, too. A lot of times the bowlers don't practice spares for that hour of practice that they have ahead of time. He may not know exactly where to stand and where to aim to make the spare. It takes a lot of time. And he's in trouble. Yeah, missed that one too. Boy, no. Again, here we have it. You take it. No, I don't want it. Again, he, this is what I said. He just did not know where to stand, stand or where to aim. And the ball hooked too soon. And you have to hit that two pin on the right to make that spare as the fans are trying to encourage Roth on. Roth takes the lead, sitting on the bench. It's going back and forth that way. A little high and breaks up the split once again. The 6-10. Roth is getting his share of breaks today, I'll tell you. Right through the heart of the pins this goes, and you watch the left side collapse out at the last second. That seven pin was standing and fell at the last second. Big break there. Of all the tournaments we've covered, I don't remember seeing the bowlers as frustrated as they are tonight. Well, it, you know, you got to take the, the bad with the good. <laughs> and right now, they're not so easy. What we have, though, is a very competitive match. Zurich now is back in front by one pin as Roth got eight on that ball, lost two pins in count. So. Right now, Roth is going at a 184 pace and Zurich at 185. And we've seen already in four frames, we've seen three missed spares. Total between the two bowlers. What it does is it gives the fans at home hope. They say, well, if these guys can, can miss them too, then I shouldn't feel so bad. So. And trips the four pin out of there. was just a shade high, but Roth got him all down anyway. And it's a tight battle in the championship match of the Buffalo Open. We'll be back to Cheek Dewaga in just a moment. I'll tell you, trying to get cultured isn't easy. We just went to the opera and we didn't understand a word. Yeah, but that big guy knows tight sure could sing. Well, at least we still drink a very civilized beer. Light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. But us impresarios drink it because it's less filling. We can't afford to get filled up. Tomorrow night, we're going to the ballet. Yeah, I sure hope they do it in English. Me too. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge with Chevy S10. 
the hottest selling new size pickup in America with available V6 power, revolutionary Instatrack four wheel drive, and up to twice as much towing capacity as any import pickup. Taking charge with much better V6 mileage estimates than Ranger. S10 pickup, maxi cab, and blazer. Now, choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and maxi cabs. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. In the beginning, man's feet walked free, but the road to civilization was paved, so man developed shoes. Soon after that, man developed athlete's foot. He got it. Now, at last, there's Mycotin. Mycotin cures athlete's foot. It's the only athlete's foot medicine you can buy with Myconazole, an ingredient available for the first time without a doctor's prescription. Mycotin in spray, powder, or cream. Mycotin, the end of the road for athlete's foot. USA hurls a pair of key National League contests your way on the next edition of Thursday Night Baseball. First, George Hendrick, Lonnie Smith, and the St. Louis Cardinals look to rise to the top once more when they battle the Houston Astros. Then it's on to San Francisco, where the Giants aim to tame triple threat Dawson, Oliver, Carter, and the Montreal Expos. A live twin bill that can't be missed on Thursday Night Baseball at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on USA. May not be seen in some areas. The difference between Zurich and Roth is one pin. The difference between winning and losing is $5,500. Sammy, whose best finish this year was third in the Miami Open, only in the fifth frame on lane 48, where he got the love tap back in the third frame. A little high, leaves the 4 7. Just a little tight. It's just that critical between coming in light and leaving that 10 and going high and leaving the four and then a little bigger mistake and you got company with them. Zurich has won two titles, one of them a PBA title doubles and then a regional doubles title as well. He probably wishes he had somebody out there right now to talk to you to see what's going on out there. Well, he won the doubles title with Nelson Burton Jr. And uh, actually Sam held the team up. He bowled better than Burton did all the way through. So he knows what it's like to win, but he doesn't know yet what it's like to win by himself. I don't think he wasn't worried about that spare either. And there we see the difference, 65 to 64. The only difference is that Roth has a strike in the fifth, with Zurich only has a spare working. As Sammy takes a re-rack on that left lane, again, the left lane giving the bowlers a lot of problem with the rack. All the players grip their bowling ball a little bit different. Sammy, you see, is right straight underneath the ball, thumb all the way in, the index finger kind of tapping the ball there. He stays right behind the ball all the way through and then has a nice turn around the ball. And leaves the 3 6 10. Boy, he's lost. Goes from the 2 8 to 3 6 10 on that left lane. It's just tough. Every player has had trouble today. Our statistician. Our trash tells us that right now the opponents at Roth are averaging 180.2, where Roth is averaging 205 for his three games. So it's a 25 pin difference. And that's about what he's been winning the games by. Tough spare here. <laughs> They're not getting any easier for Sam. He had the, the two pin was easy and he missed that. Then the 2 8 is tough. The 3 6 10 is tough also. And he makes the 3 6 10. Nice shot. Cross lane. Roth has a two pin lead with a strike working. Mark has been high on this right lane twice and he keeps shaking his hand as though he is visibly in pain from that callus on his right hand. Well, he told me before we began tonight that it's not a problem for him. Well, it could have split open while he's bowling. Moves a little deeper and slide five. And what a ten, I thought he might get off. There's the adjustment. He moved on the approach. Moved a little deeper and he's moving his hand back and forth. I move one way and it doesn't come up. I move the other way and it hooks instantly. And that's what he's saying to himself right now. He leaves the 2 5. Our statistician over here, our trash, said in the break, he says 160 may win this game and it's entirely possible. Right now, these guys don't, don't exactly have the pocket wired in. The 2 5 is not an easy spare either. And, ooh, just hangs on to make it 84 to 82. And this is one of those nerve wracking ones that is so tough. This is tough on everybody. It's tough on the bowlers, the spectators, 84 to 82, both players working on spares. We got four frames to go. 
Pretty soon somebody's going to run down there and kick him down. No, he can't do that or you'd lose pins from fouling. So. Just think of how good it would feel, though. Yes, well, a lot of players have been tempted, I'll tell you, over the years, including yours truly. On the left lane. Doesn't get the wall shot this time. Leaves the seven pin. It's a one pin difference. He has an easy spare. Mark only got one double last game. Last game. Can't spit it out there. And he has, hasn't had any doubles yet this game. Has an easy spare here, though. Sammy just studying, try, trying to figure out what to do. All, all you can do at this point, Alan, is you tell yourself that the lanes are tough. The opponent's having trouble as Roth makes the seven pin. It's like a four frames to go to win my second title, my first by myself. I've got to make four good passes at the ball. Four good shots is all he can do. That's the best he can do. How lucky he is to have started with an open and then followed it with another open two frames later and still be that close. Very true. One pin behind. Needs a strike to save kind. He changed lines and moved outside. Oh! Great shot, and that was a great adjustment. What a that takes tremendous courage to make a move like that in the middle of a game. He moved out closer to the second arrow away. Now watch this. See this ball go closer to the second arrow. Right over the second arrow, out about the seventh board there. Great shot. The six flies right around the ten. And in this particular bowling center, there weren't a lot of solid tens left. Many centers you leave a lot of them. There weren't as many in this center. <laughs> we leave them everywhere, but not as many here. Uh-oh. Uh, takes it on the left. I was a little worried about that one. Two pins with three frames to go. But he did what he had to do. He made the good pass at the ball, the good shot. There we see 103 to 101. He's going to the eighth frame on the left lane. Sam is picked to finish on this lane as he takes another re-rack on lane 47. Must be a record for a re-rack. Well, we won't count. It just... Mark looking at the scoreboard. Trying to figure out what to do <laughs> on both lanes. Sam needs a strike to save the count, if for nothing else. And he moves out on this lane. Comes to the light, and gets that wall shot. I'll tell you what, the score is driving some tremendous. Moxie encouraged in the middle of the game to change angles like that in a championship match. Again, he moved out on this lane, closer to the second arrow, and watch the head pin go to the wall and clean him out. Roth, though, is not changing. He's staying inside. He's coming in light. And we got a one-pin match again. 122 to 121. Roth has 122 in the seventh frame, and assuming he makes this spare, which is maybe I shouldn't do that because we saw Sam miss the two-pin earlier. I bet Sam... Surge looking down, not even thinking about what Roth's doing, trying to concentrate on his own game. Roth makes the two pin. <laughs> Roth going to the ninth frame. If he strikes in the ninth, he's still potential 202. So we see the difference there. It's not 122 beautiful. to 121. It doesn't matter whether it's 220 or 120 right now. The difference is it's one pin match. I was going to say it's not beautiful, but it sure is interesting. Roth needs this strike now. Again, to save count, maintain his one pin lead. He's light. And he gives the lead to Zurich sitting on the bench. The 245, he gets seven. It gives him 139 in the eighth frame. He drops behind by two pins. Zurich's fate is going to be in his own hands, and Sammy knows it. Suddenly, when that happens to you, you know, it just there's a surge that goes within you and says, boy, I've got to take the bull by the horns here and do it myself. Mark shoots the 245 and makes it on the left. Right now, Roth's potential is 189. Zurich's potential is 211 if he would strike all the way out. Sam is up by two pins, and he made that move closer to the second arrow in the sixth frame here or in the seventh frame on this lane, and he left a solid 10. Gives it room, here it comes, great shot, tremendous shot. Puts him up by 12 pins. 
Sam lets it go through. It's his best shot of the match here. See that follow through? And he knows it. The situation, Alan, going into the 10th frame is he wants another re -wreck. Is Sam needs nine spare strike to lock out Mark Roth. A strike will do it if he stays behind the foul line on the next shot. If he would get nine on the first ball, spare and strike, he'd lock him out. Nine spare, nine, we'd have potential tie. Another re -wreck. Roth looking on, he knows the score. Sam right now is thinking, make the best shot you can. One good shot. It's underway. the follow through and he knows it's there. He's just saying carry that tent to carry it. Yes. He looks at the score. Now suddenly he's he's thinking defensively. I need to stay behind the line, keep the ball on the lane. Don't make any dumb mistakes here. Needs five pins. He's behind the line. It's in the pocket. That's it. He said he needed to get himself together and make four good shots, and he certainly did. Sudden, four in a row right there. He's sudden, actually made five great shots. Sudden Sam Zurich. What a charge. What a move, though, to move from the third arrow out to the second arrow in the middle of a championship match. Shows me a lot about his character. Really does. Finishes out. Leaves a 4 7. Finishes a 2 0 9 to win his second title and his first one by himself. Roth goes to Brooklyn, comes up empty. He's just bowling out the string, though. Right. Mark did what he had to do all the way through. Just finally he ran into someone who threw some strikes at him. Sam had a four bagger and a double in the game and overcame two open frames, two missed spares. Mark strikes to finish with 178. To finish second. Which is uh, right down this, at this point, a disappointment to him. He definitely won to win. Sammy talking to Bill Supper there, and he definitely is a very happy young man at this point. And even when he finds the pocket, Mark Roth leaves the 10 pin standing. 209, 177. Sam Zurich has won his first TBA title by himself. He wins $13,000 and the 1983 Buffalo Open. We'll get back to Tikiwaga in a moment. All right, we're up 15. We got this game won. Yeah, you got to buy a light beer from Miller. Yeah, play Slice Philly. One out to go. Yeah, what can he do to his mouth? Hey, I'll keep the change. Here's my knee. Ah! Everyday driving needs. And here's our winner with a great charge in the 8th, 9th, and 10th frame, Sam Zurich for $13,000. Here to present the check is Jack Dolan, the general manager of Thruway Lanes. Thank you, Jack. Congratulations, Sam. And here to present the trophy, one of the sponsor's representatives, Dennis Stocklosa, the vice president of sales of Bell's Markets. Congratulations, Sam. Thank you very much. Sam, you won the doubles title on the PBA Tour. Now you've done it all by yourself. How do you feel? I tell you, this is one of the most happiest days of my life, and I tell you, it's been four long years, and it was well worth it. I'm just the happiest person alive right now. Uh, congratulations to Sudden Zam Zurich. 
And certainly our thanks to Marshall Holman for giving us some thrills, thrills and Mark Roth as well. And thanks to all you folks here at Thruway Lanes. Good night, everybody. The $100,000 Buffalo Open on USA has been brought to you in part by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Buy mobile detergent gasoline for your everyday driving needs. Buy Levi's menswear, makers of Levi's Action Slacks. And buy Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. From Mike Durbin, this is Al Trowick saying good night from Buffalo. We'll see you next week in Windsor, Ontario.